Hello and welcome to In The Zone, your one-stop source for the hottest news on Intel through our Tech Provider Zone site. Joining me as always is Peter Krass, editor of Tech Provider Zone. And Peter and I are gonna talk for a few minutes about some of the hottest stories that you can find on techproviderzone.com. And as I bring Peter in here, Peter, I'm gonna ask you uh, as we get started, what's the hottest story on Tech Provider Zone right now? I see some news uh, out there about Tiger Lake PCs. What can you tell us about them? Yeah, what can you yeah. tell us about them? Yeah, yeah, it's hot because, you know, uh, this is the new 11th gen uh, Intel Core processors that were announced last month. Big deal from Intel. And at the time, they said there were something like 150 OEM designs coming. Well, these are the first from HP. HP is one of the top vendors in the world of PCs, so this is a big deal. Uh, and they've got a couple of new, they've got one new, completely new machine uh, that's powered by Tiger Lake, and then they've gone back to three of their older PCs and upgraded them with the new CPUs. And I see that um, uh, one of the things I noticed in your article was that HPE is telling everyone that this is the first Spectre with an all-in-one keyboard. Now, why is that so important? I think it's just a convenience factor. Everything is in a nice place, so you don't have to go hunting for the power switch. Uh, they put the camera shutter button in there. There's a mic mute. Uh, fingerprint reader for security. That's part of the Windows uh, security. It's mainly a convenience, but it is a really nice, uh, a nice convenience. <laughs> Excellent. Now, I want to move to another interesting story that I saw on the site, um, techproviderzone.com. Uh, and if you're not looking at it, folks, you're, you're doing yourself a disservice. Get on that site right now, bookmark it and check it every day and multiple times a day. But I see one of the things that you're talking about um, as we sort of move into the September, October timeframe here, uh, what you're talking about is the hottest tech trends of 2020 so far. Um, you know, what can you tell us about them? Well, as you'd expect, a lot of them are around the pandemic. So first of all, there's just how is the pandemic affecting IT spending? And, and it turns out it is. Uh, we looked at some of the research there on that. A lot of this article is based on research that other people have done and we're sort of compiling. Uh, there's working from home, how that's affecting things. Uh, first of all, there's some uh, surveys of workers, how they feel about this. Of course, it's also affecting sales of all kinds of home security, sorry, all kinds of home computing equipment, networking equipment, yeah, and security. Uh, another big trend is security. Uh, with everybody working from home, security is becoming a big issue. Uh, I'm reminded that back in the old days, Willie Sutton was a famous bank robber, and they said, why do you rob banks? He said, that's where the money is. And the same is true, I think, now this, the, the, the cyber crooks are realizing a lot of people are working at home. This is where this, the weak security points are. And so that's a big, big topic. And there's a number of other things we look at as well. And one of the things that's so interesting, I guess, for lack of a better term, about the pandemic is it's sort of a malleable state. It's very changeable. So with that in mind, with these trends, I know, you know, a lot of times it's like, you know, a trend happens, then the sort of technology sort of, you know, happens for the, behind the trend that you're seeing, and then there's something else that comes in behind it. So with these trends, how much change do you see happening with these trends as we move into 2021 and beyond? Yeah, quite a lot. I mean, obviously, there's a big question mark hanging over the pandemic. When do we get a vaccine? And, you know, when do we go back to normal, whatever normal will be? But I do think this is going to have huge effects. We're seeing already huge growth in things like Zoom and Teams and, and Google Meet. I mean, that came out of nowhere, basically. Uh, even those companies that offer those products were totally taken by surprise. So obviously, that's going to in, in, uh, continue and probably increase. Uh, there's some other movement around things like digital transformation. There's some interesting stats there where companies are actually accelerating their digital transformation projects. And these are big multi-million, even billion dollar projects in some cases. So that, that could be a huge. Uh, and last thing would be cloud, I think, because people like Amazon, Google, Microsoft, they have these big cloud installations. And as everybody's working from home, working remotely, awful lots happening in the cloud. These guys are providing all the storage and, and compute power for it. Excellent. Now we've talked about some of the, the, the Tiger Lake PCs, which is obviously a big deal. We talked about the pandemic, which is a big deal. But it's all serious stuff. I want to talk about something fun as we wrap up. Um, so one of the things I noticed on the site is that there's some chatter about something that seems pretty cool to me. What, uh, what can you tell us about foldable phones? Well, yeah, they're pretty cool. Um, okay, so phones, these are not flip phones. These are actual phones with two screens. And you can fold them in all different ways. You can have them open. 
You can have it like a tent. You can even on one of these devices go back to back so it looks like a single screen. You can have them open like a movie screen. They're pretty cool. Um, the catch is they're expensive. Uh, the one from uh, Samsung is uh, $2,000. So I don't know about you, but I'd feel rather nervous with $2,000 worth of phone in my shirt pocket. But for the right customers, these are very cool. Now, we have two looks at it. One is a question of whether they're really ready for prime time. And some of the reviewers out there have, have been pretty rough, uh, especially on the uh, uh, Samsung and the Microsoft devices, not quite ready. Uh, but we also just did a look today, and we call it an explainer, looking at how the hinges work on these things. It turns out the hinge is the secret sauce of how you make a foldable phone. Well, that was going to be my last question, so I'll just, I'll just wrap by saying this. Um, if you're the gadget person out there or you know a gadget person in your life and as the holidays come, you've been stuck in your house and you know, you've got some stimulus money floating around or maybe you, know, you need tax, re tax return or you just got to have the latest and greatest, you know, somebody, some, some, there's always somebody in your life will have one of these things and maybe it'll be you. So with that, uh, Peter, thanks as always. Uh, and as for everyone watching today, just a reminder, check out techproviderzone.com for the latest news about Intel. It's updated all the time with the latest goings on about Intel and technology in general. Uh, Peter, as always, thanks for your time and take care everyone. Have a great day.